Former Nigerian President Goodluck Jonathan suggests e-voting as a strategy to ensure credible elections in Africa. And the Senate extends the submission of memoranda for the Constitution Review by two weeks. This is Plus Politics and I am Felicity Ezewike. Thank you for joining us on the program. Now, the former president of Nigeria, Goodluck Jonathan, has identified electronic voting as the best alternative to ensuring credible elections in the country and other parts of Africa. He argued that true democracy is only attained when the votes of the electorate count. The former president, who serves as the United Nations Special Envoy on Crisis Management, also admitted to the vulnerability of e-voting by hacking, among other glitches. Joining us to discuss this is legal practitioner Libora Soshoma and politician Tokwe Fashua. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us on the program. Yeah, my pleasure. All right, I will start with you, uh, Mr. Libora Oshoma. Uh, former President Goodluck Jonathan is of the opinion that electronic voting is the best alternative to ensuring that we have credible polls in the country and perhaps Africa. Uh, let's start from the very basic to establish your position. And of course, uh, Mr. Fashua, do you agree with him? Yeah, um, I completely agree with um, uh, the former President Goodluck Jonathan. You can't uh, keep doing the same thing over and over again and then expecting a different result. Um, life itself is dynamic. And I'm so, I haven't tried um, manual processes and then with the increase in population, it becomes cumbersome by the day. I think it is high time we also try something new. But that's not to say that um, e-voting, you know, will automatically you know, end all the manipulations in our electoral processes. Uh, but it will, if properly managed, sure, you know, create a new way. And then also there's need for us to have, um, you know, an attitudinal change, uh, distinct from what we currently have and the way we see election. So if we put, so you marry the two together, I, I, I agree with him that, yes, it's a new way to go. Uh, especially um, INEC also, if you remember in 2015, INEC did start by encouraging electronic, um, um, what do you call accreditation, uh, which was ordinarily expected to eliminate, you know, multiple voting. And then um, in 2015, it, um, uh, 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 what do you call it, um, the uh, smart card reader's um, success was, I think, about 59% success, you know. But in 2019, when we expected to have improved on it, you know, the smart cards were jettisoned and the, you know, success achieved. The smart card the success was about 19, abysmally poor. And, and so it truly shows that you, if, you, if you benchmark the 2015 election with the 2019, you will see that truly, um, why the 2015 election was largely accepted but the 2019, a lot of people condemned it that we're taking us back to, you know, the old ways of doing things. All right. Um, I understand we now have uh, Mr. Tokwe Fashua. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, you didn't get my earlier intro of you. So welcome to the program. Um, uh, Mr. Oshima has agreed that um, electronic voting is the way to go. Do you agree with the former president that we should take on e-voting yeah, I do. I agree with him. Um, however, you know, it's easier said than done. Um, what the typical politicians tell you. And, and you know what? I, I I would rather not be introduced as a politician anyway. Um, I'm just um, a nation builder, someone who tried to intervene, um, you know. So, so you're, you're that's more saying, than uh, that. What the typical <laughs> politician will tell you is our people are too illiterate. It will never work. And then you ask them, why are our people illiterate? Is because since they've been governing, the education 
sector has been down, going down and down. And, you know, the number of children out of school are more. And in fact, a lot of them like to keep it that way because those are the people they can manipulate to uh, do all sorts of things for them. Um, I like uh, what uh, Libero said as well in terms of in 2015, we were heading somewhere almost. And, you know, some, some people rode in in 2015 and decided to actually poison the old place. That's why you had 55% success in 2015 of the elect of, of the of the uh, uh, the the card reader and 19% in 2019 because they didn't want it to work. And that is, of course, I also like the fact that uh, President Jonathan mentioned it, that look, it's not only subject to hacking. It also depends on who is behind the computer. However, you know, we're now in the age of the new normal. And everything has to be done differently. Uh, machines are taking over everywhere and taking over our lives. And we are better gravitating the way that the, old, the rest of the world is going, irrespective of the fact that, of course, more of our people are illiterate. I ask people, why are Niger more, Niger more Nigerians illiterate in the year 2020 than they were in, in 1970? And that's a, that's a paradox of 1999, that you know, the kind of governance we're having is just not honest. It's dishonesty you know, whether you like it or not. So so basically, I agree that we should begin to go in that direction. But of course, a lot will depend on, number one, if people don't, if people who have the money to mobilize fraud, uh, don't decide to hijack the entire process and get hackers. There are hackers that can actually totally screw up the process. Uh, you know, like they say, to err is human. But to really, really screw things up and mess things up, you need a computer. That is a, an old saying, and it's still true. So you have the problem of hacking. You have the problem of that same illiteracy that we're talking about. It's still there. But I would say that um, the, way to do, the way to go in processes is that you begin somewhere, and you begin to forge ahead, you know, gradually. But you don't say, because of the way we are, we're not going to change at all. And then, you know, we keep on, like they say, when you're in a hole, stop digging. So we need to stop digging this hole of ignorance, this whole of we can't do things right, this whole of we don't like transparency, because what this brings is some level of transparency. Uh, the hacking problem will be there, other issues will be there, but I think if everybody joins in, and I think one, one or two critical things that this does, this uh, electronic voting, number one, it reduces the cost of running elections by several fractions. However, uh, note that those who are running things may not like that because nobody is thinking of reducing costs now. I mean, this is uh, we're in the COVID season with all the problems that we have, uh, oil price down, this one down, people that aren't paying taxes. And of course, yesterday I saw a governor buying a whole fleet of SUVs for his people. And I'm thinking, uh, you know, this country is just full of very amazing people who decide to run against the meal. If the whole world is heading in a certain good direction, Nigeria and the Nigerian leaders decide to head in a different direction, and everything goes. You see, All right, so um, uh, they would not be happy that this idea would actually, and that's the reason why many times these ideas never work. Okay, um, INEG is also agreeing that they will try and begin the uh, e-voting in off-season elections starting 2021. How feasible is that target really, considering the level of internet and mobile phone penetration? As of January 2019, uh, we understand only third of the population had access. A figure many experts are still disputing. I'm, I'm putting that question to you, uh, Mr. Oshoma. Yeah, uh... If we want to do it right, um, it's not difficult to do it right. Because um, the end of one, of one election cycle begins another election cycle. And, and so if you realize that um, you need to put things right from the end of one election cycle, you easily get it right. Uh, barring also uh, any unforeseen um, manipulations here and there. But then, let me quickly give you examples. In Nasarawa State, INEX tried um, what they call uh, the Z-Pack. The Z-Pack was to complement the card readers. The, the main function of the card reader is not just to read the card, but fingerprint authentication. And, and so, the moment you are able to authenticate that the man who is holding the card is the owner of that card, you have been able to eliminate one fraud, which is multiple thumbprinting. And the essence of ZIPAC 
was to also eliminate what they call the um, um, incidents form. Mind you, they had eliminated, they had cancelled incident form. And so in a situation where the card reader is unable to capture your biometrics, they called, they introduced what they call ZPAC. ZPAC was also now to complement that effort so that you don't just tick the box like they do and then you're allowed to vote, which was actually what happened in 2019 that reduced the number of the functionality, the percentage of the functionality of card reader. And when that happened, it eliminated multiple voting. And then they took it a step further by also using that same ZPAC to ensure that votes results are transmitted from the polling units immediately. It's like using your smartphone to snap the result sheet and then immediately send to your a central server. Once you do that, because the process of manipulating results usually starts take place between the uh, 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 polling center and the collation center. And so once you do that, the electronic results is already in the domain of INEC. So if you now bring a manipulated one, it will be difficult, a mutilated one, it will be difficult to put it in at that time because the actual result at the polling unit had been captured and transmitted through the zip pack. But what did INEC do? INEC, as, as we speak now, are contemplating dropping that process that enhanced transparency in Nasarawa election for the Edo and Undo election. And then so, the same INEC is telling you they want to experiment electronic voting in 2021. While the process they had put in place that were commended, they are already abandoning. The human element, which was what I talked about, that we must have an attitudinal change and, and, and truly tell ourselves that we want you know, a transparent process. Otherwise, we'll just um, you know, mount it, put all the structures in place, and but the human element would be lacking. And then it will take us back 10 years you know, worse than we were in 2015. Uh, what about the one that was done in Kaduna State? I'm staying with you still, uh, Mr. Shama. Um, I mean, it was held in 2018 for the local the, government. And they the said that uh, that means, it, yes, was, that to, um, to some level. Yeah, it was commendable. It, it was commendable by uh, a lot of observers when Erufai, the governor of Kaduna State, introduced electronic voting for the local government election. But at the end of the day, the problem, the same human element problem, was the fact that those that, even at the polling unit, people who ordinarily should be accredited to vote were not accredited. They were not even allowed access to the um, materials. And some of the materials, the electronic machines that were used for voting, did not arrive at the polling units uh, uh, just like um, the uh, manual processes. So all of those human elements added to the, the, the complaint of other political parties in that election. So and you, can, you can introduce electronic voting, but without the appropriate mindset, the human element will always, always, like uh, my brother uh, Tokwe has said, when your computer, when you garbage into the computer, it will give you garbage out. And so that is why the human element is very important. That's why for the Kaduna State election that you talked about, as beautiful as it was during the trial process, but the human element, you know, um, uh, complicated and fouled the process, and that was why it didn't come out beautifully. Let, let's go to well uh, Mr. Fashwa now. Um, riding off what uh, Mr. Oshama said, the human element, there is the question, I mean, the persistent question of trust deficit. The average voter in Nigeria is skeptical uh, that her vote will amount to much, scared by years of rigging an election scam. Will Nigerians, in your thinking, trust any electronic process? Mr. Fashwa. Well, well, I think Nigerians will. A lot will depend on the leaders, on also, both in the political space as well as the administrative space like INEC and Co. And um, how much they keep pushing this. Like I said, you have to start from somewhere. The remarkable thing about Kaduna election, you know, if I love him or hate him, I don't agree with everything he does. But you will see that Kaduna was the only place they held an election 
and an opposition party won three or four or five. In this country, uh, when the state electoral commissions who hold elections, the party of the governor wins everything, all the councillor, all the local government chairman. But in Kaduna, perhaps because it, 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 I think Erufa kind of experimented to see what would happen. So you find a scenario where PDP won about seven local governments or thereabouts, if I remember. You know, a couple of parties also tried to assert themselves. Meaning that the more this, the, we more, the more we stay on this uh, um, transparency issue, the more gains we will get. Like they All say, right. the, the, the sun, the sun that shines is the best disinfectant in the world. It's stronger than any disinfectant anywhere else. Meaning that transparency is key. So, like Liberal said, let's stay on this. The more we stay on this, the more we'll find solutions. Well, let's, let's, let's talk about the... the you, 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 that, both, you, you both hacker. clearly... Uh, Mr. Fashua, Sorry. you both clearly agree that, I mean, this is the way to go. But the, um, you will admit there's a lot more to just saying we want to do um, electronic voting. What about the infrastructure that is needed, aside from the human factor? What about the infrastructure? <laughs> do we have it? Right. We don't, we don't have the infrastructure as yet. But mind you, mind you, in this country, it's also a place where we invest heavily on... Do you know how much was used to purchase those card readers? And then I heard about the other one, the uh, ZPAC, that uh, uh, Liberals just mentioned. If you probably went to some warehouse somewhere, you would see that they have been abandoned. Do you know how much we have spent in this country to buy this electronic... The, 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 the what's it called the, the BV uh, what's it called the biometric capturing machine for INEC and for other if you went to places you will weep to see how much infrastructure already has been wasted. So the issue may not be the infrastructure, but the exactly. sincerity of and again a lot will depend on people who are outside government as well. Myself, yourself, liberals, your your kind of programs to put government under pressure to say, listen, it's either we want to stay in the stone age. You know, like they say, the Stone Age ended, not because people ran out of stones. There were still a lot of stones when people decided to move beyond the Stone Age. So there will still be literacy in Nigeria when electronic voting has to come in. So that also people who are abroad used to be anywhere and be able to vote. And we have to begin to build that trust among ourselves in spite of ourselves in spite of ourselves, in spite of the wrongs that we have done, in spite of the fraud in the system, we must begin Qu quickly. somewhere. Um, quickly, 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 Felicity, can you allow me to add to the infrastructure question you talked about? Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, yes, if you remember in 2019 election, how many of us knew that INEC already had an infrastructure called, you know, the back end, which we all know as the server? How many of us knew but INEC had a server, they told us pre-election that in fact it was going to be an electronic process where results will be transmitted to a central server. And at the end of the day, we all saw when the matter went to court, INEC denied that they didn't have a server. And, and so it is not a question of infrastructure. Tom, I just talked about, you know, card readers that are somewhere, the DDC machine, they call the direct data capturing machine, also were purchased. Now we're talking about zip pack. Do you know that people have been trained for those zip pack, even though INEC is trying to jettison that process now in the forthcoming elections? And, and so it is not a question of infrastructure if we truly you know, want to take our electoral process a notch further. Even if we do not have the money, a situation where governors are buying cars for traditional rulers, our lawmakers are taking deliveries of cars that we do not produce, we can de de deploy those funds to truly and actually you know, conduct a credible election. It will not only save time, it will save a lot of money because all of these issues of printing papers, taking documents and flights to Abuja, you will not need them because everybody will sit down as elections are going on, you can actually monitor the place, the, the figures online. Look all the, the all this election. all this sounds as really as fantastic. Was, but let me throw in a wheel, Mr. Oshama. Let me throw in a wheel. All this sounds fantastic. But we know that politicians in Nigerian uh, in Nigeria 
want to win. That's all they're interested in. And we also know that sabotage, no matter how high tech the technology is, there is someone who is working in the background to try and sabotage it. We know, for instance, even though it's on a bigger scale, the American situation, the complaint about Russia interference uh, with the election process. Yeah. What is the likelihood that Nigeria, as porous as we are when it comes to, you know, data collection and accountability, that when we do get to that point, for instance, we get to the point where we have to bring in, um, make the election, uh, do the election rather, um, for the presidential election using uh, e-voting. How can we guarantee the process? What are some of the challenges that will come up if we choose to go that part? Look, first and foremost, it takes a willpower. You talk about America. As I speak now, America is still investigating to find out what actually happened if there was indeed a problem. Yeah, but and the it, president and, and is still on the seat. He's running the country. Yes, Whether there is an interference, agree, we don't but, know. But it is a, a process. A, there is, no, there is no, no waterproof process anywhere in the world. Life itself is not waterproof, watertight. What you do is a dynamic process. You keep improving on it every day. Now we're talking about even constitutional amendments. Even America also had adds amendments to their constitution as seemingly perfect as we might think it is. So what we need to do is to start the process. We know politicians don't want a transparent process. It is, like Thomas said, it is left for you and I to put them on their toes to ensure that we get that we kickstart a transparent process, and then we begin to fine tune. You know, there will definitely be, 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 be default somewhere, but it is left for us to begin to fine tune those processes and ensure at the end of the day that someday we start from 40% to 50, to 60, to 70, to 80, and then get 99. But if we <laughs> don't start at all, we are done. All right, let, let's bring back uh, Mr. Fasher to the conversation. Now, what needs to be done uh, between now and say if we're projecting to do electronic voting in 2023, um, make it an acceptable option that Nigerians will be willing to accept for the conduct uh, of elections? Well, you know, some of these things are also constitutional. Um, I don't know if someone sent in a memo uh, that could begin to get us to think about that. Thank you very much for this uh, ongoing uh, constitutional amendment. Uh, I sent in two memos um, out of those 48 groups that they mentioned. In my personal capacity, I sent in two memos. One was on INEC and, you know, uh, the, the uh, relationship with parties and how they should go about that, which also affects elections. But if you want to pilot um, e-voting right now, a number of lawyers and people will whip out different aspects of the constitution that guides the conduct of election that says that you cannot go electronic for now. I've seen instances where they said even, even only, only manual evidence can be accepted in some cases and so on. So now, mind you, secondly, note that when you're changing a system, you don't cut over overnight fully. You pilot two together. All over the world, in very developed countries where there's electronic voting, there's still opportunity for manual voting. Um, you know, so you, you pilot the two together. For a long time, the two will be piloted together. So let people know that it's not, it's not a case that we're going to take the blind, old, poor woman, you know, in the village somewhere and say, Madam, you must... Because somebody is going to put her finger where she doesn't want it to be. But yeah. she knows how to recognize the paper. They, oh, she's looking for the party that carries uh, maybe umbrella or broom or, 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 or chicken or something. That's what she's looking for. And she can still try and do the voting. So, right. so we, shouldn't, we shouldn't actually take the um, extreme negative position and continue the way we've been continuing. Even yes, the Bible Bashua, says you, you that, want everyone uh, to embrace this. Sin and expect the glory to abound. It's not going to happen. So if we know that what we've been doing is not good enough, it's a good time to begin to forge ahead one way or the other. A good thing. We should be optimistic. Thank you very much, Mr. Tokwe Fashua, for your thoughts on the program. And of course, uh, Mr. Liboros Oshoma, thank you as well for your time and your thoughts. Uh, we'll be right back with you, uh, Mr. Oshoma. But for now, that's uh, where we end things on this segment. Thanks again.